Um, there we go, we're in progress. So um, thank you again for coming. Um, it's really important for us to get all these different families, all these different people, coaches, everybody. We all come from so many different places to get us all on the same page uh, before we start our year. And so I just thank you for coming and investing in your child's experience by being here to learn about it. Um, so uh, we're gonna be using that chat function. I would guess there's gonna be questions throughout this as I'm talking, so you can write them in that chat and I'll, I'll try to get to that chat at the end so please put them in there as we go and i'll make sure that i touch on it to make sure your chat function is working properly um if you go to that chat function and you see it you'll see a little smiley face in the bottom right hand corner that's uh an emoji chooser so why don't you choose the emoji that best fits the way you feel right now and send it out there okay um there aren't any, maybe there's one that has the little swear, no, no swear word one, so you can't write that, but someone could do the throw up face, I guess. So, hey, just want to get you familiar with using that chat, um, but I appreciate you coming. Let's pray to start our night. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for uh, all these families and all the students that we get to serve at Grand Rapids Christian this year. We're so blessed to have the people that we have. We pray uh, for a measure of uh, grace on the coaches, parents, and kids this year as we go about um, athletics and, and specifically volleyball this fall. I pray that you be with the kids as they are nervous, um, be with the coaches as they learn about the kids and, and try to learn more about them so they can coach them the best that they can. Be with the parents as um, they, they watch from afar and um, sometimes can, can have some challenging nights as they watch their child and, and uh, watch the way that things go. And we just pray that you give them grace and patience as well. Um, the ability to, to think clearly and lead well for their, for their family. So we just thank you for the opportunity. We thank you for the kids you've brought to our school. Thank you for Grand Rapids Christian. And we thank you for the chance to be able to be a part of athletics here. In your name we pray. Amen. So thank you so much again for coming. I'm going to put um, a couple things on the screen for you um, so that that's not it. Hold on one second. I'm going to put a couple things on the screen for you because I would really like for you to, to see um, some of the things that I talk about, um, just to have them up there while I talk about them. So we have this kind of parent meeting thing here that we're going to be going through. There's a couple items. And so um, we're just going to start, you know, kind of with the welcome, the prayer connect. I wanted you to see this. If you've got your cell phone with you and you want to check out, you won't get in trouble for checking out social media right now. Instagram, Facebook, at GR Christian Eagles. We have a website that we use. This is mostly um, high school information, but it often has community-wide information. And so I think it's important for us as a five to 12 athletic community to be connected to these things right at the start, because we obviously want you to come all the way through 12th grade. So we want you to be connected all the way through. This volleyball program starts in third, fifth grade. And it goes up through 12th grade. So you get to celebrate and be a part of and see the things that are happening with volleyball and many other sports. Maybe we'll even run into some friends and some of their kids that you see through these sport reports or through this social media stream or website that can help keep you connected to our program. So please check those out. The Eagle Sport Report is a daily report of high school athletics and what happened in there and what's coming up. And if you want to be a part of that, uh, it's a great piece of news. Uh, just email Carol in there uh, as you do it. While you're looking at that or while you're trying to join some of those things, I'll just briefly touch on our athletic philosophy. It's, it's so important to us to give our kids at this formidable age, this place where they're so impressionable, the opportunity to play, to learn, to grow, to make mistakes, to improve, um, to have failures, uh, to gain clarity on what they, what they know about themselves and, and about sport in general uh, and if they want to continue to pursue it or not. Um, we, just, we just love the opportunity to go through these years with your kids in middle school athletics, they're so important. The coach's goal during that time and what we teach all the coaches is number one, to help them, give them the best chance to know the game better and love the game more by the end of the year if it's something that they love. That's our number one goal is to help them love it more, to teach them the skills, teach them about the game. We want the coaches to provide challenge and difficulty. That is not a bad thing. We want there to be a tough loss where we have to deal with those situations. We want there to be challenging practices where, where maybe individual or teams are challenged to do more than what they thought possible. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. If your child comes home frustrated, see that as a positive because we don't 
have the opportunity to grow without some difficulty. So our coaches are coached and encouraged by me to provide those things uh, for our kids. And again, we don't want too much difficulty. We don't want to crush people, but at the same time, we don't want it to be easy and simple either because then we're not growing at all. So it's that delicate balance your coach is trying to work on to help your child learn. And most importantly, we hope they can learn about the Lord through their team, through the mentorship of the coach that we've hired, um, and through their opportunity to be part of Grandpa's Christian Athletics. So the way volleyball works, uh, the, the program structure, it's a competitive um, but participatory in nature program, okay? It's not recreation anymore, so it's not equal everything all the time, um, but we, we do try to step up the competitive nature year by year. Uh, so as we get closer to high school, which is a much more competitive scenario, and then even college would be the most competitive scenario, and then obviously professional. But we, we have an important part in that process to kind of start stepping up from that all equal all the time, to some of the challenges and difficulty that are associated with competition. I want you to know that our coaches are hired by me through an interview process. They're evaluated by me. Uh, we do uh, meetings at the end of every year. We talk throughout the season. Sometimes it's a volunteer coach, but often it's people that are managed directly by me. And so it's not somebody that we just quick hire or just try to fill a spot. We want you to know that these people are, um, are people that want to be in this scenario, and then we are working with them. And that starts in fifth grade all the way through 12th grade. It's fun if your kids are there because we get to play against other schools, uh, not just against each other like in rec sports. Um, we're getting competitive, loud gyms um, where people start to lose their minds a little bit. Hopefully not you, but maybe some parents start to lose their minds and kids start to go crazy. It's kind of a fun thing if we do it well. Um, another big thing that we want to do is create a partnership between our parents and our coaches and our school. Um, we, we coach our coaches to love parents and to trust parents. OK, not to fear them and separate them. We want relationship built between our parents and our coaches. So I tell you the same thing. Try to build that relationship. We need to keep good people around as much as possible. Um, it is an inclusive program, right? Um, but playing time will not be equal. It's important. Everybody knows that from the beginning. Um, it is inclusive. We want everybody to participate. We don't cut students. Uh, at some levels, which we'll talk about in a little bit, we do start to separate by developmental level at the time, but it is something that where it's no longer equal, and we'll talk about that soon. We want you to know that practices, although uh, middle school sports do not dominate your life, um, we do not want them to dominate your life. We limit fifth and sixth grade to three times a week. Um, wait, I have my, I'm sorry, I don't have my video on. I apologize for that. I should put my video on so you can see me. Sorry about that. Um, we do limit fifth and sixth grade to, uh, to um, just three days a week, um, and seventh and eighth grade is limited to four. And so uh, we don't want every single day to be flooded with middle school athletics. And so those of you who choose to do multiple sports in the same season, you'll have that anyway. But at least for volleyball, we're trying to keep it three and four days a week only. Um, so that, that's the big thing there. So let's talk a little bit now about um, participation. I want you to know there's a place for everybody in this program, okay? Everybody's gonna get a chance to learn. Everybody's gonna get a chance to be taught and experience some play in time where they can try some of those things in a game situation. It doesn't matter if you're new to it, if you're uh, a veteran, if you're a late bloomer, an early bloomer, doesn't matter, there's a place for you. And so um, with that said, um, with tryouts and team formation. So let's start first with seventh and eighth grade. So if you're a parent in here, a student in here, seventh and eighth grade. Eighth grade started tonight. Okay, they're the only program that started ahead of time. Eighth grade starts tonight, tomorrow, Thursday. Everybody else is going to start next week. Okay, and your coach has already emailed your parents or emailed you parents with that schedule for next week. They will email you again this weekend to remind you of that schedule and what's going on. Um, but that starts next week for grades seven, six, and five, okay? In seventh and eighth grade though, we are gonna have developmentally appropriate groupings, all right, for our teams and our scheduling. Basically what that means is that in eighth grade, there's, there's a tryout going on right now where no one will be cut, but we'll be able to separate into you know, these players are the most advanced at this time. It doesn't mean they're always going to be the most advanced. It just means right now. And these players, they're going to play at their development level uh, where they're at. 
So then we get a chance to participate in those areas. Now, sometimes when we do those splits, we also have to take into consideration, you know, is this going to be the fifth setter on the A team? Because if it is, that person's not going to get very much time. So then we might want that fifth setter, even though they're good enough, maybe they're one of the top 10 players, but they won't play that position. Maybe we want them to be on the other team so they can play that position more, right? It's always better to gain experience than it is to not play, uh, uh, not play at all or not play very much. And so sometimes the coaches have to balance that um, with like, there's just too many people at that position. So we're going to move you to a spot where you're going to get more repetitions. And sometimes it's, it's just where, where are kids at as far as their developmental level. But we're going to do that in eighth grade this week. And next week in seventh grade, we're going to be doing the same thing. And that's going to be quite a challenge for those of you that understand uh, seventh grade, because we have um, 49 participants in our seventh grade. OK, so that means we have three days pretty much to try to figure out which half of those kids is in this development level and in this development level. And again, it's it's going to be a challenge, right? It's inherently imperfect right? Three days, 49 kids. I want all of the students that are in this room and all the parents in this room to know it's an imperfect process. We will get it pretty close. There's going to be five coaches watching this for three days straight and taking notes. We're going to be pretty close as far as where we're at this year, but it certainly doesn't mean that you're always going to be a B team player or you're always going to be an A team player, right? If you're an A team player this year, whether you're eighth or seventh grade, that means nothing for how you develop yourself and improve yourself over time, okay? And so the process you go through to attack the challenges ahead of you is the most important thing. So parents, please help kids understand that. This is not a set in stone thing. This is a snapshot in time where we now have this snapshot and now we can build from there to hopefully have a different snapshot in the future. And so that's something that we can really help with. I wanna show this list a minute. So if you're a seventh grade family, this is. This is the list of team formation groups. We did this last year when you were in sixth grade, okay? Um, but we, we have a few more students this year. I guess we have 48 students. So these are your groups. So you can see group A, so uh, that's Barrett through Canooster. That's 24 people. And your schedule is then right here, okay? You can see this schedule. So it'll be Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, 5 to 6.30 every single day. OK, and for us to then evaluate the second group of girls, that would be Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, the same days, but 630 to 8 p.m. And before we go on, uh, we want to applaud the seventh grade coaches for the amount of time they're, and energy they're going to spend during these three days. Uh, that's three hours of practice more than any other coach. Right. Plus all of the discussion and note comparison that they're going to do to try to do their best. Again, we're not going to get it right, but I want to at least take a moment to applaud them and thank them for what they've chosen to be a part of on behalf of your kids. So please keep that in mind, um, knowing that uh, we're going to do the best we can with it and then get kids as many repetitions as possible throughout the year. Uh, and then we'll, we'll move to the, uh, to the eighth grade year next year. As far as fifth and sixth grade is concerned, I'm going to actually, I'm going to stop for a minute um, and check the the chat, I don't see any questions from seventh and eighth grade families. If anybody has a question, feel free to type one in there uh, about that process for seventh and eighth before I talk about five, six. I'll give it a second if somebody wants to type something in. Okay, fifth and sixth grade, um, your, your team formation is gonna take place uh, next week. All right, and that will be uh, everybody in the same gym. Sixth grade is gonna have three teams. Okay, fifth grade is going to have two teams. Fifth grade is going to meet at Iroquois uh, the whole year for practice. So parents, you can know that that's kind of where you're going to drop off. And just a real quick thing about Iroquois, it's a 5 p.m. start over there every day that you have practice. Um, kids cannot stay after school for that. Um, that's not a thing they can do. And that goes for GRCMS too. If you have a later practice, you cannot have your kids stay after school. There's no one to watch them. They have to go home. Uh, so drop your child off at Iroquois or GRCMS about 10 minutes ahead of practice. Uh, the doors will be open 10 minutes ahead of your practice time for you to get in. And, um, and then afterwards, the kids will come out of the gym to you. Um, you can stay out in the parking lot in your car 
and they'll come out to you right at that time. Okay, so I don't um, I don't see any questions, so we'll keep we'll keep plugging along here um, with our with the things that we're talking about. So hopefully that gives you some information. You should have known much of much of that information about um, practice times and, and team formation. I just wanted to make sure it was clear to everyone. Um, your coach, so you should have gotten some communication from your coach already. Um, so we wanna talk a little bit about working with coach this year. This is, this is a huge part of success in our athletic five to 12 program because our parents, coaches and administrators work together. I, would, I know a lot of people in other schools that deal with athletics and they do not have, they have way more challenges than what we deal with because of how we partner with our parents. And so I wanna thank you first of all for doing that, for trusting us, for allowing us to, to be partners with you instead of adversaries. Uh, it makes our job fun, it makes a coach's job fun. And the, the more fun a coach and an AD can have, uh, the more longevity we have, which creates consistency for your kids and for the family. So we just appreciate that. So a couple things about that. Communication and team snap. Uh, those of you who are returners, you know a little bit about team snap. Um, but after you're put on a team, whether it's fifth through eighth grade, once you're put on a team, your individual coach will begin to email and communicate with you. That's your best point of contact for things volleyball, okay? I love you. I cannot answer all of your emails, okay? We have over 100 volleyball players. If you're all asking me, I just can't do it. I love you and I appreciate you, but talk to your coach, <laughs> okay? Your coach will come to me uh, with, with questions they have about stuff that you bring to them. So communicate to that coach going forward. What I want you to know about that, though, is that we're going to use this TeamSnap app. And so you can see right here, this is a screenshot of my screen from the uh, boys soccer app, but it'd be the same for volleyball. There's a web version of this if you don't have a smartphone. And if you do have a smartphone, I would encourage you to download the app. Your coach will invite you to that team once you are placed on that team. And then you can include as many people that you wanna get communication as possible. But the beauty of this app is that you're gonna get reminders about your practice time. You're gonna get reminders about your game times. You're gonna get a map so you can click on a map to find that location if you don't know where Holy Trinity is or something like that, you'll be able to find it. It's a great way to communicate. Your coach will begin to email you through this app. So, so everything is gonna go through it. The league is gonna load the games onto that app. So everything will go there, okay? And so um, coaches will do that communication um, and they'll be working with you through that. They will still email you every single week, even though we have this app as a reminder uh, to draw attention, to tell you what's happening in their team and things that are coming up in the, in the next week. So there's going to be a lot of communication through there, and it's, and it's helpful. We've encouraged all of those coaches to email you their weekly information on Saturday. If, if we are consistently getting information coming out too late, I know what it's like for middle school parents, and on Sunday nights or something like that, we need to make a change with that coach. So we need to make sure they're doing it on Saturday, so look for that information on Saturday, okay? The last thing down there is playing time. Um, it's, I wanted to find a place to talk about this. But I want you to know that it's unequal playing time, not equal playing time, which you may have been used to in, in fourth grade or lower or in some other scenario. But I wanted to um, pull up for you the, uh, the playing time sheet for, um, for volleyball, which I forgot to pull up right away. So I'll get it right now. Um, but I just wanna go through this real quick um, so that you can see it. Your coach has a copy of this and basically they're deciding how they're gonna use this uh, playing time philosophy to impact your child's team. The one thing that we do know is that if every player wants to play with the best player, right? And so we also know that that's good for every player because best players, they can make things happen that, that less experienced players cannot. And so it's important that everybody gets a chance to play with those people. And we have different combinations, but allowing some of those players to help benefit the other players, especially in a sport like volleyball, where that skill development and putting a ball in a good spot is so important. We need those players to do it. And everybody wants that opportunity. So by nature, some players are going to play more than others. And we want you to know that that's, that's okay right? Um, they, they maybe have practiced a lot to earn that skill and we want to reward that. But at the same time, it helps people who are learning the game experience how to learn it and play it a little bit better. So in this scenario here, 
Um, Graciac does not require or recommend equal playing time, and neither do we. Graciac's our league. We require a minimum of 16 serves each for every kid in the league. And so um, we want to do that. Now, it's important that, we, that you know that if kids are showing up, doing their best, um, trying hard, having a good attitude, and they're present in their practices and the team obligations, we're going to try to beat those 16 serves whenever possible. That will happen more significantly in fifth grade than it does in eighth grade. Okay, but we want to try to beat that because we want to give kids the opportunity to uh, experience the skills and the things they've been dedicated to through practice in a game scenario, because we all know it's very different and it's all important. Uh, and so it's a, so we want to do that. Now, I also want to remind you that in volleyball, it's really hard to do this perfectly because sometimes the game is shorter, right? We know that if the game goes to 18 to 18, that's a longer game than if the game goes 20 to six, right? So you can't control the amount of points. Like in basketball, there's a certain amount of time. We know that. Soccer, there's a certain amount of time and we know that. But in volleyball, we cannot control the amount of points. So sometimes it's a challenge and, it's a, and, and sometimes, even though with best intentions, a coach may not get somebody in as much as they had hoped simply because the game was shorter than they thought, right? So that is a challenge. And, and so, so just, just take that into your grace and understanding part of your brain that sometimes it's going to be difficult to do that because we can't control the amount of points in a game, okay? Um, but as the sequence goes, fifth grade will be much more equal than eighth grade. Uh, if your coach in eighth grade chooses to play more equal, I'm sure there'll be some games where it is much more equal, some games where it's not. Um, that's great. That is uh, up to the coach, okay? The coaches are given the latitude to choose their own style and strategy for playing volleyball and how they're going to sub. Um, but what we want to remember is that they're all coached, that if kids are there doing their best, doing the work that it takes with good attitudes uh, and being present to learn, that they should get, and we try to beat those minimums whenever possible, okay? So that's, that's the heart of our playing time. I hope you can see that. Um, and know that it, it won't have, won't necessarily be equal, um, probably won't be, but 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 the goals are there to give kids as many opportunities as possible. I hope you can see kind of how we've structured that in 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 uh, in working with the league and what the league requires. Okay. Um, the next thing, uh, working with coach. This is how we build relationships, and I always think it's important whether we have new people that are fifth grade new people that are transfers or new to our school, um, or even a reminder for people who have been around. I think these things are really important for us to remember as part of being a loving Christian community that can teach by modeling to our kids how to manage the challenges, ups and downs of a season with other leaders in our community. So, so we always go through this in some way. The first thing I always like to talk about is perfection. Right. At no point would, in, would any parent ever want a coach to think that their child should be perfect. And if they're not perfect, they're going to be in trouble. Right. We never want uh, a coach to treat a player that way. And at the same time, it's important, parents, that we remember that we can't expect a coach to do it perfectly the way you had hoped it to be done in that moment every single time. OK, so perfection is not going to happen. Everybody's idea of that is different. We have to allow latitude and space and grace during that time. And remember that number one, we wanna start with trust. It's a lot to ask, right? You're supposed to earn trust, okay? But at the same time, I'm asking our coaches to trust you without knowing you, right? Because we're in this Christian community together for the benefit of kids. And so we can start with that grounded trust right away, okay? That mutual trust. And I think that's so important. Uh, kids are the, the coaches are not hired to pick favorites. They're not hired to to make life hard on your child. They're not they're not hired to win all the games, right? They're hired to make a difference for your child, to mentor them, to love them, and we hold them accountable to that as as athletic directors. But we also know it's a learning process. And just as your child's learning the sport and is not going to do it perfect, coaches are not going to do it perfect either. And we have a lot of coaches who are still learning the game as well. Uh, no matter how experienced, they learn something new every single year. And so we just want to remember to start with trust, uh, provide that for them, know that they're the other adult who's hired to benefit your child and provide them that trust. Number two, great experiences. We often want all these things to happen so our kids can have a great experience. And I would agree with that. 
But what we often have done in society is change great experience into I get what I want, when I want it, how I want it for my child, and they're going to have fun and smile. And, you know, that's a good day, but it's not a great experience. Uh, one one you know, way I can relate this is, let's say we're going to climb, climb up a mountain, okay? We're going to climb a mountain. That's going to be difficult. There's going to be elevation changes. There's going to be tough spots. There's going to be rough trails. There's going to be all these challenges that you're going to have to manage in that process. Now, climbing the mountain is a fun thing that we chose to do. So let's make that sports. It's a fun thing that we chose to do. But climbing that mountain, you all know when you get about three quarters of the way up, you're done. You're mad. You maybe want to quit. You say, man, that's too far. The air's too thin. I can't do it. I just skinned my knee on this rock. I'm done. Like we all have those moments. But if we go through those moments, we get to the top of that mountain, this fun thing that we all chose to do. And we think about, man, we accomplished something important. Like we got through all of that. That was a great experience. And now look at the payoff of this experience. Okay. And it's the same thing with sports. There's going to be so many opportunities that I hope you and your child have where they come home and say, I'm done with this. This is too hard. You know, this is, this didn't go right. I stink at this. I hope that those moments happen because that's what great experiences are built on where you have the chance and our coach has a chance to speak life into our children and to teach them how to battle through so that they can get through this thing called sports sometimes and get to that top where they can look back and say, man, that challenge, that was a great experience, okay? So redefining that I think is so important rather than just smiles and candy and flowers and happiness and wins and all those things. That's not what it's about. It's about those great experiences in the way that we would say climbing a mountain is the same, okay? So something to remember there, benefit of the doubt. This is really important. Um, at some point along the way, we stopped giving teachers and staff members and coaches the benefit of the doubt. And what I mean by that is when I was a kid, if I came home and said, coach so-and-so did this to me and I'm mad about this, my parents were like, well, what'd you do wrong? That is the first thing they would say to me. But nowadays, if a kid comes home with that, they say, I'm gonna call coach, right? There's no benefit there, no benefit of the doubt that this chosen, trained, um, God-fearing leader might be in the right and my child might be in the wrong. The other thing I say about that is, hey, I got four-year-old twin daughters that already know how to manipulate me, okay? They're four, all right? No offense to y'all, but your children have had eight to 10 years longer to perfect that skill, <laughs> okay? And get you on their side when they tell you a story, all right? So what I want you to understand, parents say to me all the time, they come in with a statement and they say, this happened, this coach, this, this, this. And I'm thinking like, what? And they say, well, because my child never lies to me. I'm sorry to tell you this, but they do. My four-year-olds lie to me. If I got a dollar, if I got $5 for every time somebody told me their child never lies to them, I, I wouldn't be working here. I love you, but I wouldn't be working here. Okay. I'd be a millionaire somewhere. All right. So just remember, we have to, we have to provide the benefit of doubt to the Christian adult leader that's been hired, trained to love your child and take their best interests at heart. Now, we know that our kids are going to have hard times. We have to expect that. But please remember to provide the benefit of the doubt. The way you do that in practice is when your child comes home with something, you say, hey, did you talk to coach about that? Yeah, but coach didn't listen or whatever it may be. That you say, okay, and maybe you're going to email coach and ask a question. It's so important to ask the question, start the conversation, allow that adult to speak back about that situation before we make a judgment or, or a decision. So please work with questions, right? Instead of statements. Remember that there's always multiple sides to the story and that this, this adult who we've hired, trained, who loves the Lord and does this because they want to benefit your child does have a probably a pretty good perspective. And also know that either side could have messed up. So just provide the benefit of the doubt to our leaders and our coaches, and, and then we can build relationships. Um, and, and in a related note, number four there, um, if others come to you to speak poorly about coach, which maybe doesn't happen at our school, but maybe it does, okay? If that happens, the best thing I can tell you is to say, oh, man, I, that stinks. I'm so sorry to hear that. I, I don't understand it. What did coach say when you asked him about that? Because all of a sudden, we've turned them back to the coach, right? We, we weren't mean. We were, we were empathetic, listening, caring. And as much as we want to speak back about that, if we can just move them back to that two-chair conversation where they can have that conversation with the coach, 
that helps everything go a lot better. So I just encourage you to use that tactic if you start to hear some, some grumbling in the stands or something like that. Um, but please use that tactic to just say, hey, I, I understand what you're saying. What did coach say when you talked to him about that? All right, and just turn them back that way. And then finally, approaching coach. Sometimes we have to be in a position where we want to talk to coach about how to work best with our child or something that we had a question about, not a statement about. But here's what I'll tell you. Not now and not right away in person. Okay. So in the moment, whether it's a volleyball game that was heated, that we won, that we lost, whatever it may be, in the moment, if you're going to talk to coach, just thank him. Tell him you appreciate it. Say, have a nice night, whatever it may be. If you got something to ask him, don't approach him right away. Because when people get surprised, bad things happen, right? Don't surprise people. That coach is not ready for that sort of conversation that you've been having in your head for the last 30 or 45 minutes. They're not ready for that. They haven't had 30 or 45 minutes to do that. So please, just not now, okay? Second thing, not in person. Instead of, instead of waiting for them and confronting them in person, which is a very tough thing to do, especially in the moment, send a note that says, hey, um, love to chat with you about this. So the next day you're gonna send a, pick, open up your email, send an email to the coach, say, hey, I'd love to chat with you about this. I had a question about this. Uh, wondering if, we, if you had a couple minutes to chat with me and tell me, and tell me about that. OK, then if you want to do that on the phone, you want to do that on Zoom, um, if you have to do it in person, you certainly can. But the best first starting point is to ask questions, to wait a little bit and give everybody a chance to not be surprised because it just doesn't go well. I can count the time on probably one finger that those confrontations go well when it's just boom right at somebody. So please, please encourage. I want to encourage you about that. Um, the last part. Um, it's just a couple of, of, of details. Um, number one is about fees. So there's no fees for volleyball. You can see what there are fees for. So if you're new to our school, just want you to know like the club and rec sports that you see on the right there, those have a fee because they're supported by the fee. Uh, the other sports that, that you don't see there, those are tuition funded. You have to attend our school. So because you attend our school, there's no fee for those sports. Your team may choose to make a sweatshirt or something like that, which is great. Um, you know, in volleyball, you'll have to, you'll have to um, purchase your own knee pads or your own spandex shorts or whatever it is that they're going to wear. We provide a uniform in that, in that scenario, like a uniform top, but not the other thing. So there are sometimes things you have to, to purchase, uh, but there's no fee for those things. When you go to a gym in volleyball and basketball, there is going to be a ticket fee. And this is an important thing. I, I hope you don't grumble about this uh, as you go around because the things that I'm able to provide our student athletes with uh, in the last seven years, we have purchased over 85 volleyballs. In the last seven years, we have purchased almost uh, 70 new basketballs. In the last years, we've purchased new uniforms for every single team in our entire program, including this year's volleyball, because we have like 8,000 volleyball teams. But I've purchased it across every single sport, and that's in seven years. You know how much money I get for those things in a given year? $2,500. There's just no shot that I can do that. You know how I do that? We host games. People pay the fee to watch their kids. It's the way that we build money so that we can provide kids things. So just know when you go to these places or when you come to our place, your $3 or your $6 means a ton to us. Okay. It allows us to do things that many other schools can't. We have beautiful facilities. So we get to host a ton, which is why I'm able to build um, money from these ticket sales in order to provide these things for our kids. It all goes directly back to our program. So please, as you go to these things, please pay that $3 and know that's helping, you know, the, the St. Anthony kids do something that, that's outside their budget. That's helping the Grandma's Christian kids do something that's outside our budget. So, so please know that that's coming. Spectator conduct. In volleyball, we get to sit in a gym with lots of people and be heard by lots of people. Um, and so I just want to remind you that I'm quite certain that if Jesus sat next to me in the bleachers in his person, I would be like the most encouraging, happy, joyful, positive person in the entire world. And I think you all would be the same too. So just remember that he sits by you. We can't see him. Sometimes we don't feel him, but please don't forget that he sits next to you. And as you wear that shirt that says Grand Abbas Christian on it, you represent him. And so just please, I want to encourage you, be neutral or encouraging, right? Um, whether that's to students on other teams, other coaches, our coaches, referees, 
be neutral, have you know something good to say, don't say it, or be encouraging, be positive, be thankful, be gracious. Those things put Christ on display in a way that he wants to be put on display. Okay, the second thing is that we have a coach and referee shortage in, this, in America. I want you to know that we, we had to cancel four postseason tournaments last year, not because of COVID, but because we didn't have enough officials to run the tournaments. Those officials go up to the high school levels because there's a shortage up there. So we get what's left. And sometimes there aren't any left. We have a shortage. Why do you think? Well, it's a lot of times because spectators and coaches don't treat officials well. Right? Why do you think we have a coach shortage? Well, it's because parents don't treat coaches very well, by and large. Just to be honest with you, I was a coach and still am a coach for a lot of years. I don't get treated that well by our parents all the time. Right? So I just want you to know that the way that you are with our coaches and with our officials, number one, we need good people in those spots. Thank them. They have the guts to spend their time and sacrifice their time doing this for your kids. Thank them for it. Be appreciative. Be neutral and encouraging. Same thing with officials. These officials are giving so much of their time to help your child participate. I mean, if you know the game so well that you can tell them how to do it, then you should get stripes on because we need you. We need you. We don't want to cancel games because we don't have officials. So please, if you know the game well or I hear you telling the official how to call the game, I might just bring you an application. Okay, so be ready for that. All right. So please enjoy it. Have fun. Your child plays middle school sports, not for a scholarship. They don't play it for the Gracie Act Championship trophy. <laughs> all right. They don't play it for all the, the banners we have in our gym here because we have zero. All right. We don't even have a trophy case here. Your kids play because they want to have fun. They want to experience something with their classmates. They want to compete and they want to enjoy that time together. So remember that as you enter the gym. Be encouraging, be fun, smile a lot. Um, the best thing we can say, research proves it, is I enjoyed watching you play today. Without the dissection of the game plan or anything else, just I enjoyed watching you play. I'm so glad that you play this sport. Just sticking to those things will just encourage kids to enjoy their experience, learn more. And so those are just a couple things for you about spectators working with coaches. To wrap up, um, uh, oh, I had COVID on here. Sorry. Real quick with COVID, not nearly as much as last year. Masks are not required as of yet. That may be coming, okay? For indoor sport, that may be coming. I don't know that. It's just a guess. Uh, it's encouraged and it's allowed. So please, if you want to have your child do it, do it. If you want to wear one, do it. We, we, it's encouraged. It's allowed. It's totally fine. Um, we want to encourage people that are 12 and older to get the vaccine. It's a personal choice, not a requirement. It's just an encouragement. Um, spectators, um, you will when you go to the gym. Last year, you had to fill out, like, scan a QR code and fill out that you're there. You'll have to do that again. So, you know, try not to be too uh, frustrated with that. But you will have to do that again when you go to indoor facilities. And also just be ready for things to change. Um, as you just watch the news, you hear of Forest Hills doing this or Lowell doing this or Giant School District LA or whatever doing this. I just have to believe that we can't allow ourselves to be surprised if something changes. So just be aware, be ready to roll with it like we did last year, provide that grace and understanding and encourage our kids to do what we have to do to continue to have seasons and continue to enjoy it and keep other people safe. So um, before I wrap up with this last slide, um, I'm gonna check, uh, I, I just wanted to talk briefly about Jason Ross who came to speak to us at our, our welcome back worship this this morning at Grand Rapids Christian. He's a pastor at Ada Bible Church, the East Paris campus. He he said that every day he dropped his, his daughter off at school, he would tell her these four things. He told her, you're a child of God. Be kind to everyone. Listen to your teachers and work your hardest. And I loved it because as I sat there and thought, I run everything through an athletic view in my life when I go to church, whatever it may be. And the first thing I thought is this is one of the wisest things you can tell. And as a parent, we can speak to empower our children. Number one, you're a child of God. Your identity is not in your ability to spike the ball, serve it, or bump it in the right place. Just remember that, son, or just remember that, my daughter, that your identity is in Christ. Right? Be kind to everyone, whether you're the best, the worst. Put Christ on display by being kind to your teammates. Serve them. Serve each other. Right? Be kind to everyone. When you compete, compete hard. Compete tough nose. Compete, try to win. But don't do it by stepping on other people 
and raising yourself by stepping on others, right? Do that in such a way that you're kind and considerate to people putting Christ on display. Third, listen to your teachers. It's us telling our kids, we trust the coach. We trust the teacher. Listen to them. They will pour into you. They will challenge you, but listen to them because just like I have advice for you, they have advice for you. And I thought that was so powerful to give that power to another person to help them raise your child as well. And then finally, work your hardest. It's about growth and becoming the best version of yourself. So when you work your hardest, the only thing you can do is continue to improve, continue to show up and continue to do your best. So I love those four things from Jason as I put them into an athletic context. I hope that made some sense to you with the things that we've talked about today. Um, so I want to check for questions real quick. Uh, so I'm going to stop this a minute and see if there's any questions. I don't see any. So if you've thought of any questions now, uh, please throw them in there and we'll try to answer them um, as we go. The coaches will, will send you another email. Um, so eighth grade, you're already going, but the, the coaches will send you another email this weekend that will outline for you what's going to happen next week. And then again, remember, once you're on a team, you'll start having that one coach to be your resource for your schedule and all of those things. Um, there's a question in here about spandex are purchased, personally not provided. They are not required. Shorts, pants, uh, those things can be worn as well. Um, and so that's totally up to a family's choice on what they would like to do. But that the, the shorts, pants, or spandex um, is purchased by the family based on their choice. Most likely, we're going to choose to have a black color of those things to match the jersey, if that makes sense. OK, um, if there's any other questions, please type them in. Um, but I appreciate the time that you all spent with us tonight. Um, we are right on the money. We had a lot to cover. We have one minute left until I said you'd be done. So I want to make sure I beat that number. So if you got to go, uh, you certainly can go. I appreciate all of you. Look forward to seeing you out here uh, at some of the events. Please introduce yourself. Um, always, if you see me, assume that I don't remember your name because there's a lot of you and I try my best between the two campuses to remember everybody, but please assume I don't know your name, introduce yourself so that I can get to know you even better. But thank you so much. Have a great night. Um, and, and talk to your coach if you have questions about your tryout for next week. Thank you so much. I'll stay on in case somebody has a question.